we don't have any more any states uh, which have an incidence between 10 to 15 percent. Most of the states are either uh, 20 to 25 percent. And now we have three states right here uh, that are the bright, uh, the dark uh, brown, that are West Virginia, Mississippi, and Louisiana. They have already over 30 percent obesity incidence. And uh, unfortunately, by year 2008, we'll have even higher incidence, and a lot more states will have that dark brown color. And uh, we say that uh, uh, obesity has become definitely a bigger uh, problem than bird flu or HIV. We're experiencing an obesity epidemic. It doesn't happen only in America, but it happens also in the whole world. Um, children in uh, Japan and China are overweight. Pets are overweight. And even animals in the wild, bears, have learned how to beg food from humans and uh, do not hunt anymore their prey and they are getting pleasantly plump themselves. Two-thirds of the population is either overweight or obese. And uh, we heard yesterday, um, maybe it's already three-quarters of the population of, the, of America is becoming obese or overweight. By the year 2030, it's predicted that the whole population of America will be either overweight or obese. Um, the children of today are getting fatter, and they will become the fat Americans of tomorrow. This is the first time with all our medical technology, children are going to be living less than their parents. And the saddest part is that 300,000 deaths are attributed to obesity. And, uh, and it's still growing. How do we measure obesity? Our gold standard used to be BMI. BMI is the ratio between the weight in kilograms and the height in meter squares. But it has become obsolete. Why is that? Does anybody know? Because athletes have a lot of muscle. And according to the BMI, the, they are overweight or obese. Uh, Elderly population, they have lost all their muscle, but they have a lot of fat. But according to their BMIs, their weight is normal. What is better? Waist measurement is the best, the, but even better is waist to hip ratio. It's important also for you physicians to know where to do the measurements with the hip and the waist. And you only need a tape measure you have to palpate, and sometimes it's difficult in our obese population, you have to palpate where the waist is located. And that will be on top of the hip bone. Patient has to be straight, not, um, and not slouching or sitting, and you measure the waist measurement on top of the hip bone, and then the hip measurement on the bottom of the hip bone. Then you make a ratio. And the, the best ratio we're going to discuss later. The other way to um, see whether you are obese is to stand naked in front of a mirror. Now, if you look at yourself and you see some bulges or some rolls that you're not happy about, then you know that it's time for you to lose some weight. Now, let me tell you about what is the ideal waist to hip ratio. For men, the ideal waist to hip ratio is 0.81. For women, the ideal waist to hip ratio is 0.64. Now, we looked low and far to find which woman has the ideal waist to hip ratio. Once I gave this lecture and somebody shouted, you, no, I have to decline. I do not have the ideal waist to hip ratio. But there is one woman who does, and her ideal waist-to-hip ratio is 0.70. Now, does anybody know who that woman is? 
Excuse me? <laughs> no. Anybody, any idea? No? Heidi Klum. And I hope this picture wakes up everybody. <laughs> there she is in her full glory. Uh, why, do we, why don't we let our patients be fat? Because obesity affects all organ systems. It affects from top to bottom. Shortness of breath, snoring. And you know that snoring is not very good for uh, um, relationships. GERD, gastroesophageal reflux. We have more acid reflux. As the diaphragm pushes up the fat, there is more gastric reflux. There is more acidity. You know that the number one uh, medication that is sold in America is anti-acids. But what is the downside of this is that this acid produces the first time that this has been found, a cancer of the esophagus, and that is related to obesity. Pickwickian syndrome, again, as the diaphragm pushes the fat up, we have less aeration of the lungs, and people fall asleep. They fall asleep while they are at work, but unfortunately, they fall asleep while driving, and that has fatal consequences. And we all know about heart disease, hypertension, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, strokes. Another cancer that has become prevalent now among my uh, obese population is cancer of the liver. Before that, fatty liver only occurred from alcoholic intake. Now, fatty liver is becoming more and more common among our obese population. I have many, many patients. I would say 50% of my uh, obese population have elevated liver enzymes, which are a harbinger of fatty liver. And when they lose weight, their um, liver enzymes go down, goes down and their fatty liver improves. And unfortunately, once the patients uh, are, have the liver cancer, they cannot, it's irreversible. There is no treatment. Arthritis and joint disease, you're well aware if you have extra weight on your joints, of course you have inflammation. And many of my patients walk in with walkers and wheelchairs, and that perpetuates, again, the obesity cycle because there is less ambulation. Insulin resistance and diabetes is happening also at the, at the epidemic um, rate. So we have obesity epidemic, we have a diabetes epidemic, and type 2 diabetes, which only used to happen in uh, the mature population, is happening very commonly among my young pediatric patients. When my obese uh, pediatric patients come to see me, I see them having either, it's classical, either they have insulin resistance or they have type 2 diabetes. So we discuss cancer of the esophagus and the liver, but we also have sex organ cancers, like breast, uterus, prostate, colon. It says that it's, we have an all-over inflammation, and that's the third epidemic that we have, the itis epidemic. And that can be measured with the high-sensitivity C-reactive protein. And a lot of my patients say, oh, it's just baby fat, or it's just a little um, uh, fat around my back, or love handles. Oh, it's not a big deal. Yes, it is a big deal, because fat is an endocrine organ. It doesn't sit there doing nothing. It produces all kinds of inflammatory products that are called cytokines. And there is a whole alphabet soup of inflammatory uh, cytokines. There is interleukin-1, interleukin-6, uh, plasminogen activating factor, tumor necrotic factor, and of course the high sensitivity C-reactive protein. When I see an obese patient coming to see me, I imagine him to be a cauldron boiling over with all kinds of inflammatory products. And the only way to take care of that bubbling over is for them to lose the weight.